Thanks for staying with us. Before now, we were talking uh, with uh, okay, Chuku Nwanguma, Executive Director, Rule of Law and Accountability Center, RULAC, on the fact that uh, Tawarid Lagwaja, the Chief of Army Staff, was saying even with tw 2 million uh, security personnel, it wouldn't be enough to police uh, the Nigerian state. Right now, we're moving on to something else, and that is academics. The Academic Staff Union of Universities has issued a 14-day strike warning uh, to the federal government to resolve some lingering issues dating as far back as 2009. ASU is demanding the release of withheld salaries due to the 2022 strike action and expressed frustration with the government's lack of commitment and delay tactics. It also demanded the release of unpaid salaries for staff on sabbatical, part-time and adjunct appointments affected by the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System. It stated that these actions were generating a crisis in the public university system. To discuss this with me is Dr. Peter Ogudoro, the education, he's an education researcher and leader of Nigerian teachers community. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Okay. Now, um, teachers, <laughs> your reward is in heaven right? Are we still uh, saying that to ourselves? Or should we still be saying that to ourselves? Because I don't see a reason why an agreement from 2009, we will be talking about it today. 2009, 2019, this is uh, uh, f uh, like 15 years since that agreement was made. What is really happening? Well, you should know that um the politicians are the ones who are giving us trouble in our country. They have not yet uh, understood in very clear terms that uh, education truly is the bedrock of development. They are yet to appreciate the fact that it's only when you get education right that um, you can begin to grow and develop in other uh, spheres of life. Uh, but unfortunately for us, um, we have a group of people who call themselves politicians who uh, somehow are, are living in, 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 in self-delusion. They, they, they live in that they can just continue to do what they're doing in Abuja and they wake up one day and Nigeria begins to fly uh, technologically, economically, socially and politically. But that's... Um, um amounts to living in in a fantasy world that does that will never come to pass they are just pushing a mirage uh, any all the countries in the world that we know of who have made it uh, in terms of development who we admire and who our citizens like to migrate to uh places and countries that uh, started with investing massively in education and of course uh, higher education is 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 quite uh, critical for for development in any country because that's where you have uh, the space to generate the cutting edge ideas that can give you competitive advantage in the kind of global uh, environment we have now. But back home, our politicians um, are still struggling with the idea that um, truly without good quality higher education, it's going to be difficult for us to improve ourselves economically, socially, politically, and technologically. Uh, I think that one of the um, challenges we have had in our country is the fact that the people who are running our politics are people who have permitted to train their own children abroad, uh, where they get the best education possible in Europe and North America, and then uh, run a decrepit education system for the rest of us back home. And so they do not wear the shoes and do not know where these um, shoes pinch. And that's what I think um, is at the root of the problem. Um, but the time for all of us to uh, put our hands on the deck and make things happen positively uh, for, for the higher education system has come. But how do we put our hands on deck? You know, the hands have always been on deck, but I, I think there's a, a sword being brandished that the longer the hands stay on deck, uh, the more, the, the more uh, possibility of them being severed from the, from the body. So if all hands come to the deck to try to help, how are they going to help? 
Well, I, um, if you if you do my kind of job as an educational researcher, you will know that um, uh, most of the time we have allowed ASU to fight the, the battle of fixing the higher education system alone. And uh, unfortunately for us, uh, parents uh, somehow have also been deceived into thinking that ASU uh, and the university lecturers are Nigeria's problems when it comes to. Uh, the challenges we have had in the higher education system. But that's, that's not true. Uh, the way forward is for parents to recognize that this battle is, is, is uh, to make the higher education system work in Nigeria. It's not a battle that should be left entirely in the hands of us. The parents who have their children in these um, uh, higher educational institutions should get involved in the conversation. They should seek audience with the federal government. There is, there is, there is a, a, a parent-teacher association, which is a national body. I, I think that they should uh, come into the uh, conversation and play a more pivotal role. Uh, sitting down there and thinking that it's ASU's problem, and uh, because um, it's, they are the ones who are owed salaries, it's not going to help, help anyone. And you people in the media, uh, uh, a few of you are trying, like you have put it on on the front burner this morning for us to discuss it. Well, I'm not sure that education is getting the kind of attention it deserves in the media. You hardly find education making front pages. Uh, we tend to find uh, issues in education, uh, uh, you know, getting smuggled into maybe page four, page seven, page 21 of the typical uh, national newspaper, unless uh, we get to a point where this entire system is short and then it makes front page a bit. The following day, it goes back to take a front, a, a, a back seat. So I think that um, we shouldn't um, continue to leave the battle in the hands of only ASU. There are several other stakeholders. The parents are there. Uh, the children themselves, too, um, should uh, not allow themselves to uh, be used against the people who uh, are there, uh, working for them and uh, doing their best, sacrificing, uh, even when they have alternatives, to stay back home and uh, and, and, and give them the kind of education that will enable them to become globally competitive. So uh, if we get all of all of us who are stakeholders in the industry working together and get that we will be able to get the politicians to listen to us and uh, get them to realize that the idea that because they're training their children abroad, they can afford to um, uh, ignore uh, the challenges of the higher education system in Nigeria. Uh, is also not going to uh, serve their best interest because ultimately those children are going to come back and live in Nigeria. And uh, most of the hospitals where they will be, um, uh, will be treated uh, are likely to be hospitals where the medical doctors trained by Nigerian universities will be the ones uh, occupying those spaces. And if they are not competent people, um, sometimes they may run into problem. Even when you have got your private jet, Sometimes before you, uh, uh, you, you make the trip to, to the UK in six hours or to United States of America in 12 hours, a lot can go wrong. So we are always better off uh, getting things you know, happen positively for us back home uh, because that's the only way we can guarantee a good society. But my problem right now is that we are so good at adjusting to whatever reality we find ourselves. So instead of the parents that you're talking about trying to make their voices heard, a lot of them are just saving up money to make sure that they send their children out to go and school somewhere else, even if it's in Bene Republic. And that, for me, is a problem. How do we start to address this issue when the Nigerian people seem to be comfortable all the time, will make noise for one week, and after that, that's the end. Um, let, me, let, me, let me just leave that and then I'll ask you, what is your level of your relationship with the General uh, Nigerian Labor Congress? Because that seems to be... Uh, and the CSOs as well. That's it. Those seem to be the bodies that talk for Nigeria. How do you collaborate with them when you're trying to address these kind of issues and uh, n not just leave it into the hands of ASU alone? Well, these conversations are ongoing, uh, but um, you know the way it works in Nigeria. Uh, the politicians have a way of um, uh, penetrating uh, the people they identify as critical stakeholders, and sometimes um, they can... Uh, you know, handle this in ways that discourage uh, those who should be the forefront fighting the battle from getting from getting involved. And so um, we'll, the conversation is it, it will continue. And uh, but um, it's not a sprint. I tell you, Nigeria is 
a complicated, uh, you know, uh, uh, runs a complicated system and is generally a very complex country. Uh, I tell you, um, <laughs> it's a country where you have over 500, you know, languages and dialects and, you know, cultural differences exist. And sometimes when uh, national issues um, start burning like these, uh, people uh, come into the conversation, um, first they consider uh, who are we complaining about? If that person is from their own tribe, they, they, they check it out, they think it's about their tribe, <laughs> rather than the national issue that affects that affects everyone. And I think that that remains a major challenge. Uh, so even when you think uh, there are uh, you know civil society organizations, uh, a lot of times you also discover that politicians penetrate these places and ensure that their cronies are the ones who run them. And that makes life difficult for everyone. But uh, again, uh, the place to start from uh, is still the primary school and, and secondary schools where we can manage to give our children values that enable them to realize that when it comes to uh, issues like this, uh, we shouldn't um, take a, a, a tribal uh, approach to it. We should look at matters of merit and recognize that long term, uh, all of us uh, have big prices to pay. And uh, if we keep uh, shying away from problems because the people we think we are complaining about are people from our own tribes, ultimately, all of us um, are going to pay, pay, pay the huge price of not getting the, what, what we want. So, my, my friend, that's, that's the, the way to look at it for now. But some of us are going to continue to try. Uh, we are not going to get tired uh, because this is also a country that uh, is full of potentials. And uh, we are very blessed in many areas. And I think that if we get Nigeria working uh, uh, in every sense, um, we would we'll have reason to uh, welcome people from all, all corners of the globe. And they would like to live in this place. But um, this education looks like the major obstacle, the major hurdle we all have to scale you know, to, to get to our El Dorado. Yeah, but I was just I was just thinking when you said the, the place to start is the primary school. We're going to build patriotic Nigerians from the primary school who will be ruled by the unpatriotic ones who did not even school back in Nigeria because uh, as young as three, four, five, they are out of the country, some of these children. And they are the same ones who, because of the connections, uh, as we say in Nigeria, will now become the people who are ruling us and still doing this and bringing policies that they do not even care how it affects the people. So I don't, I don't even know how that is going to be. Do we start from calling for a legislation that will make these people train their children back home or, or I don't even know. Where do we start from? Because if we say is uh, from the primary school, what about the people who will not even send their children to the Nigerian primary school but will have the opportunity to rule over these people who are patriotic in Nigeria? Yeah, we will have to continue to talk. Uh, so and the assumption that uh, when we have this kind of discussion on a medium like yours and uh, on other media, uh, whether orthodox or, 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 or new media, uh, that we are just doing mere talking, that these things don't get anywhere. I, know, I do not think that is, that is correct. So uh, development in the national and the global sense takes time. And, and even the countries we admire, they didn't get to where they are overnight. I, I, I'm also a practitioner of international development, and I have uh, taken time over the years, you know, in the course of doing research abroad, uh, in, in, you know, uh, globally, um, uh, to uh, look at how uh, Europe got to where they are, uh, especially uh, the major uh, countries that are doing very well, Germany, you know, Britain, uh, and those in the Nordic region, Norway, Finland, uh, and Sweden. How did they get to where they are? What you find? is that um, it has taken them centuries. Nigeria, you know, uh, became in Nigeria only in 1914. And so we are just about uh, about 100 years old, just a century. That is not to say that we have to wait and go through everything that those in Europe and North America, you know, went through before they got where, to where they are. But definitely, development is not, is not um, something that happens overnight. You have to continue to engage in these conversations and uh, uh, and uh, bring in uh, scientific tools that will enable you to talk with the individuals who are in the parliament. Uh, uh, you may not be able to convince all of them in one day, but if you can get uh, a critical mass, those whose voices matter on the floor of the house, 
uh, to um, send in bills and, and sponsor them uh, 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 and uh, give them incentives, make them know that uh, they will not lose uh, if, they, if they sponsor such bills. So, so we'll be able to get to a point where we can convince the parliamentarians to keep their own children here and have a legislative tool that will compel them to do so. And uh, I, I tell you, once we're able to achieve that, uh, Nigeria, Nigeria's, most of Nigeria's problems will, will, will evaporate within a matter of about 10 years. But if we don't get uh, the major people who run our country to, to train their own children here at both at uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, we are going to continue to only you know do the talking. But we'll, we'll keep this on the front burner, uh, hoping that uh, as we talk, uh, someday our voices will be heard. Yeah, I just remember a governor who put his child in in the public primary school. I don't know if he was able to do one term. After that, he just removed him because, uh, well, insecurity, because of uh, so many things that he was talking about, which, if he had put his mind to it, he could have uh, made sure that those things don't happen again. Because if it is insecurity, he could have stemmed it. If it was uh, poor teaching, he could have done something about it. But he removed the child. And now, I wonder what country the child is, uh, uh, is going to school. But when you talk about this fight, we must keep talking and all that. Um, most times you say that there are people who are supposed to uh, be on the lead. Who are these people that should uh, be... Uh, at the vanguard of this fight for a change of legislation, a change of attitude, a change of everything? Is it the parents? Is it the teachers? Is it the legislators? Is it uh, the diaspora community? Who should carry this flag and be flying? All of us, all of us have to get involved. Uh, the teachers are major critical, are major you know, stakeholders uh, in the industry. Parents are major stakeholders in the industry. Their children are the ones who uh, the primary beneficiaries of the services we render as, as teachers. And so our parents must recognize that um, they, they have to get involved in, in, in fighting the battle. Uh, if they leave it strictly in the hands of, of, of teachers, uh, whether at uh, you know, secondary or, or tertiary level, we'll be, we'll be doing uh, ourselves a very big disservice. So uh, what I know, uh, for example, is that if... Um, we are able to uh, come together uh, and walk and present a common voice. We are likely to be able to um, penetrate uh, the, the places that matter. Uh, uh, let me um, uh, uh, put it on record that, uh, unfortunately for us, uh, the people who are enunciating uh, most of the education policies we have in Nigeria that are driving the kind of the teaching we do and the practices uh, that uh, you find in the education system are people who are largely ignorant. Uh, they don't have the skills, they haven't got the right values, and the, the fault is not there. So they have not been properly trained because they are using the wrong lens to look at education in the 21st century. And one of the things we can do is to uh, probably uh, send them uh, to the right places, uh, you know, for the right kind of training. And those right places will be a country like Finland. Uh, if we uh, take um, the major education uh, uh, policy makers, uh, those in the parliament at, at both, you know, uh, in both houses, Senate and House of Representatives, and probably add some of those who uh, head uh, standing education committees in, in, in state houses of assembly and send them to Finland and, and, and spend and let them spend one week there. And if they are happy and humble, uh, get people like us to um, provide uh, facilitation, you know, guide them uh, as they go on the trip. They will go and realize that um, there are systems that are that are better on, and that um, they were not born the way they are. They did make their own mistakes in place in a place like Finland, for example. They, 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 what has brought them to where they are now started only in the 1970s. You know, so it's not a very long time ago, and it was born out of research when they realized that truly education is the bedrock of development, and the way to make it happen is to give every child access to good quality education. And then they did it in an equitable manner. So if you go to Finland, what you find is that a minister's child is sitting in the same classroom with the, with, um, the, the daughter of uh, the minister's uh, gardener, the minister's uh, messenger, the minister's secretary. 
And so I, I think we need to get to that point. That, they, that, the, what they do is the opposite of what we're doing in Nigeria. The minister's child, if they, they choose to have their children trained in Nigeria, for example, at primary or secondary school, you find a minister, a minister who is serving Nigeria in, a, in, in, in Abuja, but finds the best school in Lekki. He sends his child to, to Lekki, and he is living in Abuja. It, it doesn't happen in, 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 in the Nordic region. You know, in, in a place like Finland, if a minister uh, lives lives in uh, in in Island Avenue in Ikeja in Lagos, his his children will have to study in a place they can walk to, you know. And that place they walk to also is a place where all the children of the poor in that neighborhood also come to study. And so they will, uh, that that minister will be under pressure to ensure that the quality of education available in that space is, is, is good enough, you know, for his, for his own children. We are not yet doing that. So the, the uh, ministers take their children, you know, to far-flung places and keep them in boarding houses to get the best education in places we call international schools. And then we keep the children of the poor in places we call, you know, public schools with uh, decrepit infrastructure and teachers who don't have the latest thinking in the industry. And so we all continue to suffer. So we need to um, sell these ideas to um, the people who are education inspectors, who are education policy makers, who, who populate standing committees of, of, of parliamentary uh, systems uh, that oversee education so that they can understand it first and foremost and then they be able to sell the idea to the rest of us in the larger community. As we speak, uh, they haven't really understood that uh, what we are doing is wrong. So in some sense, uh, it's ignorance that is at the root of our challenge. It's not necessarily the fact that they know and have refused to do. Mm -hmm. That's a new angle to it. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this demands by ASU, as we wrap up now, this demands by ASU, uh, do you think they're outrageous? Are there things that they can bring down? Uh, or what are the challenges that are that's making us still talk about these um, agreements reached uh, since 20 or 2009, uh, we are talking about them now in 2024, which is very funny and insulting to the sensibilities of people who know the value of education and the people who make that education possible. So is it that these are outrageous or what are the challenges that you're seeing that, uh, that make the government not to be able to, uh, to reach this agreement, to, uh, to fulfill this agreement as it is? Uh, I, I have scrutinized the, uh, the demands of ASU, and uh, I have no reason to believe that they're asking for spurious things, for, you know, <laughs> they're not making uh, unreasonable demands. Uh, that's about the bare minimum they need to be able to survive and, and uh, uh, get the knowledge and the skills they need on a, on, on a sustainable basis to be able to uh, uh, fulfill their obligations to society as university lecturers. Uh, and so, uh, having said that, uh, I must uh, 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 acknowledge that Nigeria is also a poor country as, as, we, as we have it now. So, the way forward is for the two parties to um, find uh, a space where they can sit down and uh, discuss in a very honest, sincere and open manner with all the issues uh, that they are all familiar with put on the table. And the uh, government uh, has uh, more to, to do now than even us, because us have always showed interest in making the system where they work, you know, run, run properly. But what I have observed over the years is that most times government has a tendency to send people to the negotiation table who have no authority to implement the agreements they reach there. And so they go and have negotiations with us, and they tell you they have to get back to the people who send them to the negotiation table. And when they get back to those people, they have the tendency to say, ah, sorry, uh, you have promised too much. We don't have the money that will enable us to go as far as um, you people say uh, uh, we should go as a negotiation, you know, as negotiation partners. And so uh, this time around, I, I think that the smart thing for the government to do is to ensure that from the day one, the Minister of Education should be on that table. Let, let, he, he knows a lot that the people they have been sending do not know, so that he can stay there and, and tell um, us representatives what uh, is possible and what is not possible, so that we don't keep going back and forth. Uh, trust is very important in life. If you, if you read the 
you know, statement issued by us, you will see uh, an angle of it that is uh, calling attention to lack of lack of trust. They no longer trust government, and that's because over the years they have been uh, 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 they, 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 they they have been promised things that that never that never happened. So we shouldn't continue to behave like that because we're also threatening our children via the way we we interact with us. We are telling our children that it's okay to uh, promise things you are never going to deliver. Uh, because all of us read the papers, and uh, uh, this is becoming very uh, 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 unprofitable for Nigeria, and it's putting us in very bad light. And children who are going to become politicians tomorrow are learning that uh, it's okay for a politician to make a promise he's never going to he's never going to honour. And so, uh, the summary of what I have um, said is that government should step out with only the people who have authority or enough authority to commit government and uh, get the resources out so that w once we do this next negotiation, uh, whatever we agree on will be implementable. Okay, well, let's hope we get to that point. Uh, policymakers should not stay back. Those who have the authority should not stay back. They should be on that table. Let us just realize in this country how important education is for us because everything hangs on education. And like I was uh, just joking at the beginning of this, uh, teachers, we were told that teachers reward is in heaven. It shouldn't be. Heaven can be created on earth and it could start from here to know what you are going to enjoy in afterlife. We'd like to thank you, Doctor, for coming on the program this morning. We'll continue to talk on Plus TV Africa. We take these issues seriously. We'll continue to talk. Whoever listens will listen. Whoever does not listen, one day will get to be told by someone who listened. One day we'll get it right in this country. Thank you so much for being a part of our program this morning. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Do have a great day. Mm. We've been talking with Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher, leader of Nigerian Teachers Community, on uh, the fact that uh, uh, ASU has threatened another strike if after 14 days nothing is done by the federal government. Let's see how that pans out. And this is where we draw the curtain on the program this morning. It was a pleasure being here with you. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji.